Putting God first can be difficult. What can we learn from Peter that will help us put God first in our lives today? Peter was one of the oldest disciples Jesus called. He was determined and reliable. On a stormy night, Jesus appeared to the group as a ghost walking on water. Peter was the first to speak out in his desire to be with Jesus, even if it meant jumping out of the boat and walking on water. Putting God first seemed to come easy for Peter until he almost drowned. As Peter walked, he doubted. As he began to be engulfed by the water, he must have felt the shame of public failure. He was the one who had asked to come to Jesus, but then everybody witnessed his failure. In the midst of despair, it's not easy to put God first, but Peter did it. He shouted for help and Jesus saved him. This story repeats itself. Jesus is arrested and crucified. Peter had promised to be next to Jesus no matter what, but Jesus warned him of his betrayal. Peter wasn't afraid. He was ready to die for Jesus. This becomes clear when Peter attacks a soldier in Gethsemane. What Jesus did next was perplexing to him. Jesus healed the man and said he didn't need protection. What could that mean? Peter was ready for conflict and Jesus rebuked him. He followed Jesus from a distance and denied knowing him three times that night, just as Jesus predicted. Peter had failed once again. You see, putting God first amidst our failure, confusion, and shame is practically impossible. It's only through God's power that we can accept God's forgiveness and start again. Later, Peter would become an excellent leader as Jesus trusted him again and again. Perhaps you've been unfaithful with returning your tithe and giving your promise in the past. Perhaps you've failed. Putting God first means asking for and accepting God's forgiveness today. It means starting anew to trust in God with your finances. Peter put God first. His example compels us to do the same. As we return our tithe and give our promise, we are challenged to put God first.